Okay guys, welcome back to the Lightburn crash course. Uh, last episode we installed Lightburn and we installed the drivers and we activated the software and added our Galvo laser to Lightburn's device profile. So uh, over here we added our 110 fiber. Uh, so we're all set as far as that goes. Now we still have a bit of machine settings that we need to go into and, and we need to kind of set these up because we did not import our EasyCAD config. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch last episode. Uh, but we chose to set this up manually so that we could go through it section by section because there's a lot here and I feel like it's important to understand. But we're not going to get into that yet. We're actually saving that for next episode. For now, what we want to do is kind of customize our Lightburn workspace. Uh, this seems a little alien, a little foreign, if you're just coming from EasyCAD. Uh, if you've used Lightburn, it looks familiar enough, but um, and you'll notice this has changed from last episode too. I kind of set it to more of like a default Lightburn setup. Um, so I want to show you how to kind of mirror that EasyCAD feel so that it doesn't feel too alien or too foreign to you uh, when, once you're jumping into Lightburn. So um, that all of that kind of stuff is going to be up here in the settings cogs. Um, so the little wrench and screwdriver, this is for your machine. And the settings cog, this is for Lightburn. Uh, so there's a couple things that I wanna go over in here with you really quick. So we'll go ahead and click it. And that's gonna open up just kind of like the Lightburn settings. Uh, so the first thing is beginner mode. Um, you can choose to use beginner mode or not. If you turn it on, it just kind of gets rid of some of the extra buttons up here uh, and over on the side that you maybe use less often. Um, I've never used beginner mode, so I, you know you can just turn it on or off if you want to. Um, if you get overwhelmed easily by too many buttons, but, uh, that's all it does. Uh, the other thing, curve quality, unless you're on like a billion year old computer, you can go ahead and turn that up to perfect. Um, it just gives you nice clean lines when you're rendering and doing previews and things like that. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, a lot of this stuff is self-explanatory, uh, like dark background, right? That's only for the workspace. It doesn't do the whole UI. Hopefully we'll have a dark mode eventually, but right now it's just for the workspace. Uh, and, you know, anti-aliasing, basic stuff like that. You can change things like the invert mouse wheel. Uh, you can change the default font size, the default toolbar icon size. So that's all available in there for you to change. Uh, but the first main thing that I want to bring to your attention uh, is this one right here. It's called filled rendering. And filled rendering is really important. Um, it's how you can tell if things have been hatched. So when we hatch something in EasyCAD, uh, it fills in, right? We can see it filled in, and that's how we know that we've hatched it. Uh, in Lightburn, we use the fill mode, um, but by default, it doesn't actually fill anything. The only way we can tell that this object has been filled uh, is if we look at it in the layers panel over here and we see that it's been set to filled. So if we come up to the Lightburn settings and we check that filled rendering button, now it's going to show as a filled object. Now we can't see our hatch settings yet. You can zoom in all the way on this. It's just kind of a filled vector shape. Uh, and we'll talk about that in uh, an episode or two when we kind of start coming into like the UI and how to use things. Uh, but I, you can see it. Um, but this just, it, it allows you to kind of at a glance tell that you've set something to fill. And I think that's really important. Uh, the other thing that we have not really talked about is uh, just kind of like our general workspace settings. This is a 110 by 110, but it looks much smaller than that just because of the way the grid spacing is set up. And we can change that in here too. That's over here on the right. Uh, here we can change our grid contrast. I tend to like low contrast. Uh, our visual grid spacing, typically in my videos, if you're used to seeing them the way I have it set up, uh, I usually have the grid spaced out too. So every little grid square is two millimeters. Um, and then you can set things like your snap distance and click tolerances if you want to get into that, but you certainly don't have to. You can also turn snapping on and off here. If you want to use snap or not use snap, uh, that's fine too. Uh, so let's just go ahead and see these changes really quick. So there we go. So that's looking a lot more like 110 to 110 to me, uh, but there's still one thing missing. And this is something I specifically asked the devs to add while we were doing the beta. And that's our center line cross. Uh, this is actually super easy to turn it on. Uh, they've made it very easy. So again, light burn settings. And it's just this option right here, show work area center cross. So we'll go ahead and check that and hit okay. 
and there it is guys so now we're now we're rocking and rolling guys now we feel like we have a true easy cad experience within lightburner i'm a lot more comfortable when i'm looking at this than with what we started with so um that is kind of just how to get things a little more easy cad looking so that it feels a little more familiar there's a few more settings in here like our shape move increments so you can change how much a shape moves when you use the arrow keys when you use shift with the arrow keys and when you use control with the arrow keys so control is typically the smallest one then the arrow keys are kind of like a medium movement and then shift is a big movement you also have some options for the camera view whether if you're using light burn camera you want to see it in black and white or color uh, you can set camera resolution and uh, there's a couple other settings in here so um, that's basically what's in here one thing that we kind of skipped over here too if you're used to working in inches per second instead of millimeters per second um, my videos are always in millimeters per second but you can select inches per second here uh, and that's going to change everything over to imperial um, i highly prefer millimeters per second we certainly don't want to be over here on the diode side of this grid where it's millimeters per minute right that's way too slow for uh for galvo lasers so millimeters per second is going to do just fine for us and just to make sure that we've kind of completed this section we can take a look here at some of the file settings now i'm not going to go super into this but um, there are some general import settings up here that you can take a look at uh, so hidden layers from ai uh, group imported shapes so just things that have to do with how you're exporting your artwork for lightburn uh, you're gonna you're gonna set those up here if you want to but i always leave these on default you can set things like your default font and how big you want it to be when it first kind of spawns onto the page. Uh, you have, if you're a DXF person, you have DXF import settings like setting your units, uh, which is really important for things scaling correctly when you import them. Uh, SVG import settings. So again, right, this is set for Inkscape right now, but you could change it for Illustrator if you're a big AI person, uh, just to again, maintain scale on things um, and then there's some other settings down here and you can read through those there is not a lot uh, that is super complicated about this and all of these little options are super duper self-explanatory so that's the basic light burn settings guys um, we're all done we've got it set up it's feeling much more familiar now so in the next episode what we're going to do is we're actually going to come into this wrench and screwdriver icon and we're going to start setting up our laser for our particular source again this is less important if you imported your mark config 7 file when you added the device but uh, I still think it's really important for everybody to kind of learn what these do and, and how they work. It's not as bad as it looks. So um, we're going to dive right into this on the next go around. So uh, thanks for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you got value out of this one, guys, don't forget to smash the like button, let everybody else know the content is good, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we add to the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you wanna join the Laser Everything community, hang out, talk about all these cool new features and stuff that we've got going on with Lightburn for Galvo, there are links to our absolutely 100% free Facebook group and Discord server down in the description, right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. So if you wanna support the channel and help us continue doing what we love doing here, which is teaching you guys how to use your lasers, uh, consider signing up. It starts at eight bucks a month and every dollar of it goes to making sure that we can continue to do what we love to do. And uh, we, we really do love doing it so much. And all of the information that we put out on the YouTube channel for everyone for free is thanks to our members over at the Laser Master Academy. If you wanna go check that out, you can sign up right now over at masters.lasereverything.net. Hope to see you over there and I hope you enjoy the next episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course.